we praise the Lord for everything and uh, welcome to this uh, number 15 in our presentation the tabernacle series and this is uh, understanding the times our father which art in heaven we thank you again that uh, you are good and you are gracious and uh, everything is going to work according to thy will and according to thy purpose and so be with us as we go through this that uh, the enemy of souls may not have his way but you may have your way in jesus name amen and so uh, it has been a journey and uh, we are almost coming to an end of um, our presentation and uh, I just want to thank the Lord for all that he's doing for us and um, I pray that um, his will may be done in our lives. We may continue uh, looking unto him, we may continue uh, uh, seeking his face all the day and uh, this uh, presentation that you are going to have at this hour uh, I'd like you to be sure that you take your notes I'd like you to do all you can to follow in inspiration in the Bible so that um, we may at least understand what the Lord is speaking to us because the times that you are living in are solemn times and things are happening in the background which uh, will bring as face to face in compact with the image of the beast and uh, the mark of the beast and so i pray that um, the lord may uh, be able to speak to us the lord may be able to resonate with us and we may accept his will um understanding the time the time of the visitation in luke chapter 19 verses 43 we have a ground to work to cover for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of um, the visitation and so it is uh, a great thing to understand our time of visitation lest that time comes and we don't understand it and we be taken unaware it is great to understand our times of visitation because israel when they fail to understand their time of visitation their house was left unto them desolate and that is not what we want to happen in our lives in ezekiel chapter 7 verses 5 thus said the lord god an evil an evil behold is come an end is come the end is come it watcheth for thee behold it is come the morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwelleth in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountain. In Matthew 16, 1, uh, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, he say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering red and lowering O ye hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the time a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas and he left them and departed so here is a nation that doesn't understand the times and they ask of Jesus Christ to show them a sign. And um, this is like uh, walking by sight and not walking by faith. And this is the kind of status many of us find ourselves in, that we want to walk according to the sight and not according to the faith. And while it is a time for our visitation, we find that we do not discern that is the time and we keep on asking for the sign when the sign is amongst us but because we are not spiritually minded we can see it um in the flood no one knew the time genesis 6 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be an 120 years so in the time of the flood they understood the time and then we are told in Genesis 15, 13, And he said unto Abraham, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. They understood also the time of their living in Egypt. 
In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10, For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I'll visit you and perform my good word toward you, toward you in causing you to return to this place. So there is an aspect of time also and the understanding of the time for that generation. And then the prophecy carries us to Daniel chapter 9 verse 25. Know, ye, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time. So there is an aspect of understanding the time. Continued on in Isaiah chapter 42 verses 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. And then we are assured, surely the Lord shall, Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So there is nothing that is going to get unaware the children of God. We are told that we are not part of the darkness, but we are of the children of the light, so that that day may not get us unaware. And so we want to look at some things, and this is some... Um, something that um, uh, will uh, help us understand some of the things that uh, have been troubling us. How can we know that we are in the time of our visitation? How can we know that uh, we are in the times of our visitation? Has Christ revealed unto us the things that shall be able to transpire before the um, certain events of the closing of the time uh, really transpires? Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Uh, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things, uh, these things um, be fulfilled. And... In Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now there is an aspect in the times of Noah, or, or knew which uh, we neglect so much that um, he was told the time of the flood he was um, able to be told that he should flee the city because the Lord was just about to destroy it so as he were, it were in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of the son of man uh, we are not yet just we are not just to wait uh, and knowing of the times that we are living in. As Noah was told what was about to happen, when it will happen, the Lord also will be able to reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets, and they shall be able to warn the world of um, what is coming to happen. In Matthew 24, 39, we are told, uh, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. These are the wicked. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. So we are admonished to watch. And then we are told, Genesis 6, 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he, is also, he, he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years there is a time frame and uh, the lord said unto no come thou all thy house into the ark for thee i have seen righteous before me in his generation in this generation for yet seven days and i'll cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights and every living substance that i have made will i destroy from off the face of the earth again you have the aspect of Noah understanding the time um uh yeah, uh, the aspect of no understanding the, the, the time that he was living in. We had the days of Lord. He understood that the angel were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And so he was told, go to the country. And we have Noah being told, enter into the ark because this place I'm going to destroy. It. We are looking at understanding the time. Will um, the Lord do this for that generation 
and then just assume us those who are living in such a stupendous time such a uh, important times of the history shall the lord reveal these things to that generation which was not living at the end of the time and yet the generation that is living at the end of the time he leaves them ignorant of these things and so you may quote some verses that uh, no one knows the time and the hour and that is not what i'm saying that we should know time and the hour but god will reveal to us that these things are coming to an end in fact uh, we are told that the spirit of the lord shall be withdrawn from the earth and men shall go to east and west looking for the word of god and they shall not find it meaning that the lord would have even made the ministers understand there is no work to be done anymore that uh, everything has come to an end and it's a time to wrap up the work in righteousness in john chapter 5 verse 20 we are told for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth and he will show him greater works than this that he may marvel then when you go to revelation 1 1 the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john so if john was able to be given a message that applies unto us how can god keep us in darkness and then we are being told we must understand the message for you cannot prepare without understanding what you are preparing for so there is a an aspect of understanding so that um, you may be able to do needful preparation you cannot um, prepare to go for a 20 mile journey with only a gas that can last you for 10 miles you must know the journey that you are undertaking so that you may take the necessary things that can be able to help you go through that journey and so this is what uh, 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 that's why I believe strongly that God cannot just let us be ignorant of the end times events which are so much important to us and uh, uh, let us be ensnared. He says that only the wicked will not understand, but the wise shall be able to understand. That is Daniel chapter 12. Uh, it should be verse 10 that uh, the wicked will do wickedly and they shall not understand, but the wise shall be able to understand. And... Um, uh, 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 to be wise is to shun evil according to job 28 28 to eschew evil that is the fear of the lord and um, to do his will uh, that is the understanding and so um, if we will uh, if um, uh, we will uh, be uh, willing to understand what the lord wants to do to uh, in this time then uh, we must be able to sanctify ourselves we are looking at this theme of understanding the times if uh, no knew the times if lot knew the time if the 70 weeks were given for the children of israel to understand the time and then we were given the midnight cry and the judgment hour to understand the time there is no way that uh, we shall not understand when this great um, controversy is coming to an end let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning and ye yourself like unto men that wait for their lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately and so you find that uh, christ doesn't just come to knock uh, to the doors of the people who are unaware of uh, the times that they are living in he tells them you yourself must um, let your lights be burning and then uh, in the book of luke chapter 12 verse 37 blessed are those servants whom the lord whom he cometh shall find watching now they cannot be watching if they don't understand the time remember we are talking about understanding the times and the feasts of the sanctuary helps us to understand the times that we are living in and what we ought to do as the children of Issachar in First Chronicles chapter 12, verses 32. And so, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. 
Verily I say unto you that he shall guard himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. So they understand the watches. And if they, Lord, if the Lord doesn't come at the second watch, they understand he will come at the third watch, and so forth. And uh, uh, in uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume 2, page 190, Jesus has left us a word, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. So in all the four watches, you are prepared. And if he doesn't come in the midnight, then expect him uh, where? At, uh, if he doesn't come at even, expect him at midnight. If he doesn't come at midnight, expect him at Kokro, and if he doesn't come at Kokro, know that he cannot miss in the morning. So you have the four watches. To be, You are sure that in one of these watches he will come, and whichever watch he comes, you shall be ready. So it's not something that should get you unaware, because either he comes at even, at midnight, at uh, Kokro, or in the morning. So lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, and what Say unto you, I say unto all, watch. We are waiting and watching for the return of the master who is to bring the morning. Lest, com lest coming suddenly he find us sleeping. So we are a people who are awake to the events portraying his second coming. We are at the events that portray his second coming. In uh, he con She continues to say in um, 2T190, what time is here referred to? The return from the wedding. Not to the revelation of Christ in the clouds of heaven to find our people asleep. No, but to his return from the ministration in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. When he lays off his priestly utter and clothes himself with garments of virgins, and when the mandate goes forth, he that is just let him be just until, and he which is filthy let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous let him be righteous still, and he that is holy let him be holy still. So when we are talking about people watching, it is not about the second coming of Jesus Christ per se, but the ending of the work of the ministration of the high priest in the most holy place. I tell you after probation closes, nothing matters so much because you have decided on which side you will be. Either you are on the side of Christ and your name is sealed forever, or you are on the side of the arch enemy and your name is sealed forever in that uh, direction. And so our watching, brothers and sisters, it's not about the second coming, because at the second coming, everything is um, finished up. Our watching is the watching of the close of probation. Let us just reread this and uh, solidify what we are talking about. We are told what time is here referred to and uh, uh, this time of watching. Let us just um, look at this. Jesus left us the word watch therefore. So what time is here referred to? Not to the revelation of Christ in the clouds of heaven, to find a people asleep. No, but to his return from the ministration in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, when he lays off his priestly utter and clothes himself with garments of virgins, and when the mandate goes forth, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. So, Inasmuch as the second coming of Jesus Christ is of that importance, I can assure you that the close of probation is the most important time. And uh, you can quote every verse and every uh, a quotation that says that we shall not know the time when the probation closes because great controversy says that uh, men will be living upon the earth and that final verdict has been made uh, uh, never to be uh, 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 overturned again and so uh, I believe that but then the Lord will withdraw his spirit when the probation closes he withdraws his spirit so that there is no more evangelism going on 
And it will only be foolish virgins who can think that evangelism can go on at that time. No, the door will be shut with those who are ready and then there is no more evangelism. In fact, she tells us that uh, when the time comes, he will bid us to fold our hands and he will close up the work himself. And so it is not something that is hidden to the wise. They shall be able to understand and uh, uh, I'm not talking about the specific minute, the specific month, or the specific year, but the events that will transpire, the Lord will uh, impress on their minds. There is, no still work, there is no work still to be done for the wicked. In Matthew 24, verses 42, we are told, Watch therefore, for ye know not what your Lord doth come, but know that this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And so, um, the waiting virgins, the ten virgins are watching in the evening of this earth history. This is precious to me. All claim to be Christians. All have a call, a name, a lamb, and all profess to be doing God's service. All apparently wait for Christ appearing, but five are unready. Five will be found surprised, dismayed outside the banquet hall. Banquet hall. Christ object lesson, page 412. We are told in Great Controversy, page 402, paragraph 1. At the call, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The waiting ones arose and trimmed their lambs. And what does it mean to trim your lambs? They studied the word of God with an intensity of interest before unknown. Angels were sent from heaven to arouse those who had become discouraged and prepare them to receive the message. The work did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. So it is the angels that arouse men to prepare to receive the message. The angels are always vigilant to the work of God and in every movement they are the ones who have started the message to the people. And then the people were able to receive the message and they went about doing the will of God. So the work of the angels is an immense work that cannot be just uh, ignored. The work did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. It was not the most talented, but the most humble and devoted, who were the first to hear and obey the call. Farmers left their crops standing in the fields, mechanics laid their tools down, and with tears and rejoicing went out to give the warning. Those who had formerly led in the course were among the last to join in this movement. The churches in general closed their doors against this message, and a large company of those who received it withdrew from their connection. In the providence of God, this proclamation united with the second angel's message and gave power to that work. And so you find that if people are leaving their jobs because of the message, then they understand the time that they are living in. It is not a time for secular work. It is not a time to be engaged in the affairs of the world. A soldier doesn't entangle himself in civilian affairs. When he is called at the command, uh, at the post of his duty, he doesn't have to ask anything but he goes to the duty and so if we are the soldiers of christ when the command goes that this is the time we who are in christ will be able to understand that this is the voice of christ and not the voice of the enemy in matthew 25 verse 6 and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him it should be noted that the call at midnight brings stark focus to the bridegroom if they are ready uh they then uh, they can enter into the banquet in 49 of isaiah o zion that bringeth good tidings get thee up into the high mountain o jerusalem that bringeth good tidings lift up thy voice with strength lift it up be not afraid say unto the cities of judah behold your god and so uh, in Christ Object Lesson, page 415, we are told those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold, you are God. The last race of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. 
the children of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. And so uh, we are in this stirring time. And uh, we are told, this is what has been presented to me, that we are asleep and do not know the time of our visitation. But if we humble ourselves before God and seek him with the whole heart, he will be found of us. Meaning, we will understand our time of visitation. I'm looking at this issue of understanding the time, and uh, I'm trying to bring out some of the revealed information what is not revealed is not for us to strive for it and start setting dates and start setting times. And when those times reaches, we are disappointed and we fall off the path of faith. No, we have to work with the revealed information. We have to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And at the right time, he will reveal that which is needful and salvific unto our lives. Men enter into speculations and uh, they, they, they put together a string of things and they come up with them and say this is what the Lord reveals in his word when actually when you took a second look at what uh, the people are presenting you will find a different notion am I right am I infallible I'm not I'm asking you to be a Berean and look into the things that I'm speaking that the Lord will be able to show to his servants it is a time to close up the work. His spirit shall be withdrawn and the work will not continue. Amongst those who knows the Lord, he says that when time comes, he will bid us to fold our hands. And so how do we get to this, um, uh, uh, how do we get to this, um, uh, state of understanding the time that we are living in. In John chapter 4 verses 34, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say, Not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So, when uh, when the other people who don't understand the times are saying it is still far off, the Lord is telling to the wise, look at the field. Is it not time to do something? And so the wise will understand, but the wicked will not understand a thing. We are told wicked men will go about deceiving and being deceived, but the wise shall be able to understand while, uh, when Daniel stands in his lot. Matthew chapter 9 verse 37, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest tool is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. How will they um, call for the Lord to, uh, um, uh, to, to, to bring about the reapers if they do not understand it is a time to reap? It doesn't make sense to me that uh, the people can be asking, for the reapers or the harvesters when they do not know it is a harvest time. Like uh, you cannot uh, call a people to come and harvest your garden when it is a weeding time. It, it doesn't make sense. So if you will call people for harvest, it means this, that really you understand it is the harvest time. and. Uh, I know some, many questions can arise from this, but uh, uh, let us continue and see. The, uh, I'll skip over this. Now, the vision of Isaiah, the vision of Isaiah. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, uh, he was able to behold the glory of God. And... Uh, when Isaiah beheld the glory of God, he said, I'm a done man. I live amongst a wicked people, and I live amongst the people who have lying tongues, and uh, I'm just as one of them. And then the Lord saw the need of Isaiah. When Isaiah realized who he was, then Christ was able to minister unto him. 
And it was when Isaiah saw the glory of the Father filling the old sanctuary. When we shall see the glory of the Father filling the whole earth, we shall know that this is the time for our character to be perfected and be sent out to do the work. And so when Isaiah realized his need, the Father was able to touch his lips with coal and sanctify him. And when the Father now asked, whom shall I send? Isaiah was able to say, here I am, send me. And so I think it is uh, in last day events, page 179, Paragraph 2, where we are told that um, the great issue so near the enacting of the Sunday laws will weed out those whom God have not ordained, and he will have a pure and true sanctified ministry ready for the latter rain. And so everyone should be working uh, to remove every defect of his character so that they may be able to stand to be used of uh, the Lord. And so we find that this was the status of Isaiah. And then when the Lord said, whom shall I send? He was able to say, here I am, send me. God is calling for men and uh, for men who are willing to leave their farms, their business, if need be, their families to become missionaries for him. And the call will be answered. How do you answer the call that you do not understand? You can only answer the call that you understand. You can only uh answer the call that um, you understand so uh, i'm talking about understanding the time and the lord making his people ready so that uh, they may avail themselves for the great final work i want to end into the last segment i have just laid some foundation of understanding the time but now i want us to look at the events that are transpiring in this world that Christ said, they, when you see them, you can know that this work is about to close up. We don't have to be caught in ignorance and in darkness because there are things, specific things that the Lord has said, they will be able to happen and we shall know we are at the close of the time. So allow me in the second half of this presentation to bring you something that um, I have tried to remain limit myself to the revelation of the word of god and uh, what is uh, in the spirit of prophecy and uh, you are allowed to agree with the information or disagree with the information we look at truth at different angles but now understanding the time for the latter rain i, I want us to look at this thing as uh, the inspiration tells unto us now There are things which are happening in various parts of the world that uh, we need to open our eyes to them. Iran's president believes Allah has chosen him to prepare the world for the coming of an Islamic savior called the Mahdi. But before the Mahdi return, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad believes there must be global chaos, even if he has to create it himself. Now, this is how the men of this world are deceived, that um, if there must be a crisis and it is not a, in a supernatural way they must create it. We were looking at um, the previous presentation, how men are trying to cure poison with poison and how it is falling. Whether it is his belief that Israel should be wiped off the map Denials of the Holocaust, obsession with going nuclear, or support for radical Islamic terrorist group, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is a man on a divine mission. You can take the link and read the whole article how men can be deceived in these things. And so, continued on. Ahmadi Nejad is reportedly tied to a radical Islamic society in Iran that believes man can hasten the appearing of the Mahdi by creating chaos in the world. Now, brothers and sisters, the chaos that you see in this world, even the men who are deceived understands the time and what they ought to do. They think they can really hasten the coming of their false god. 
but yet Christians do not understand they can hasten the coming of the true God and the true Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to focus on that. The evil men and deceived men who have their own gods think that they can hasten the coming of their false gods. And they are saying if something supernatural doesn't happen, they will create something to hasten the coming of their Lord. The Christian who ought to understand better do not act the best. Now, listen to this man. Ahmad, uh, Ahmad uh, Nejad has stated that this chaos must take place before the Mahidi can come on the scene. Cantrell said, Shiti eschatology says the Mahid, the Madhi um, or uh, the Mahidi second coming will be marked by apocalyptic times. Wars, famines and floods will ravage the earth, followed by judgment day and a battle between good and evil. And that is the battle of Armageddon we are talking about. Followed, this will all come true under the rule of the perfect man, the last divine source on earth, the Mahidi, who will re-emerge and Jesus Christ and the other noble men will accompany him. Ahmadinejad once said, but until that day comes, Ahmadinejad, who sees himself as a kind of John the Baptist figure, is telling the world to prepare. I want you to understand that in the great controversy, we are told that the heathen gods will be paraded so that uh, many may be deceived. And uh, it will be a time of purifying those who can receive the latter rain to be able to sound the loud cry. So as God is preparing his children to sound the loud cry, the devil is preparing his forces to bring about a false revival for false gods. Now, why do I even have to present these things that I'm reading in the series of the tabernacle? Because there is a false revival that is about to happen in this world, brethren and sisters. And then God tells us in Acts chapter 3, if you have your Bible, Acts chapter 3, turn with me there, and uh, it is verses from verses 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus which before was preached unto you. So repent, your sins may be blotted out, and then Christ will be sent. And then we must receive him until the restitution of all things. This is not the second coming. That This receiving him is not the second coming, but receiving him in the heart as the latter rain. And then everything is restituted and then the second coming happens. Because he cannot come if man has not been brought back to the image of God that was uh, uh, destroyed by sin. And so, during the day of blotting out the sins in the sanctuary, when the work is about to end, the Lord will send a refreshing from himself, which is called the latter rain, the fourth angel of Revelation chapter 18. And while this is happening, Satan himself also will be preparing for another revival, false revival. In fact, this one I have not included in my slides, but uh, I should give you a reference um, uh, in the book Great Controversy. Just allow me to give you a reference uh, that uh, maybe can keep us thinking about these things. Uh, that uh, a spiritualism uh, this is a great controversy page 588 paragraph 2. Look, I, 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 I like to blow it on the screen. I like to blow it on the screen so that um, we may be able uh, to see what I'm saying. I'll just uh, 
do it as quick as possible. Uh, I want us to understand what kind of times that we are living in. And so, look at this. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day, it has greater power to deceive and ensnare. Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things. He will appear in the character of an angel of light. Through the agency of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible and manifest respect for the institutions of the church, their work will be accepted as a manifestation of divine power. Think about that for a second. When the work is closing and spiritualism takes over the world, like this man uh, that is saying that he is appointed as the Messiah or John the Baptist to, uh, uh, to prepare the way of Mahid, which is a false god. We are being told that Satan himself will be converted after the modern order of things and demons and spirits will profess faith in the Bible. It is something that should make us tremble for a minute. But let us continue with what is happening. All armies of the world, including the tribulation force, head for the Middle East to engage in one massive battle as the world becomes even more dangerous to live in with death, mistrust, and treachery all around. Tim LaHaye, considered one of the 25 most influential evangelicals, has been teaching this for decades. Before the Mahdi, the Islamic Messiah, can appear, chaos must come. This chaos will culminate in a false Armageddon where the powers of earth converge on the, mid, on the Middle East for battle. Only after this counterfeit battle takes place can the devil come impersonating Christ. Now, the Islam are waiting for who? Mahdi. Buddhism is waiting for Matriya, meaning either world unifier or simply the friend. The Aztec Mayan Messiah, the return of uh, Quetzalcoatl, an olive-skinned man with a white beard and followers in red. The Hindu Messiah, Kalki or Javada, the ninth and last avatar of this yuga circle, his final incarnation will appear from the west. The messiah of Central Asian nomads, the white Bohan, he will come when the people of the steppes have abandoned their ancient gods, communist Russia was atheist. He will come to offer them and the entire human race as a spiritual rebirth. The Christian tradition, at that time they will be waiting for who? For Jesus. It is interesting that all these heathen gods have timed the time of Jesus coming. That is when they want to show up also. All religions await a Messiah figure. All whose names aren't written in the books, lamp of books uh, in, written in the Lamb's Book of Life will see in the devil's personating of Christ their Messiah. Now what were we told? Repent ye and be converted and the refreshing shall come from the Lord. The latter rain will, which will bring in the last message and usher in Jesus Christ. But now, all other false religions are also waiting for the Messiah at that time. Don't you see the need of our sins going before us and being confessed and forgiven so that we may not be deceived by one of these gods? We are told... As the crowning, this is Great Conrovers, page 624, as the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation. Revelation 1, 13-15. The glory that surround him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air. 
Christ has come, Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth. And again, we do not understand as we should the great conflict going on between invisible agencies, the controversy between loyal and disloyal angels. Over every man, good and evil angels strive. This is no make-belief conflict. It is no mimic battle in which we are engaged. We have to meet most powerful adversaries and it rests with us to determine which shall win. We are to find our strength where the early disciples found theirs. This is Evangelism 7.5. 7.5.1 says, As we near the close of time, there will be a great and still great external parade of heathen power. Heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And this delineation has already begun to be fulfilled. By a variety of images, the Lord Jesus represented to John the wicked character and seductive in front of those who have been distinguished for their persecution of God's people. All need wisdom carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of this earth history. Hold on. In the sounding of the seventh trumpet when the atonement is coming to an end, the mystery of God which has been preached by the prophet shall be accomplished. That mystery is God in us, the hope of glory. But also the mystery of iniquity shall be revealed, which is that man of sin leading uh, the war against Christ and his law. So there are two mysteries which are happening at the close of the earth's history, that is at the close of the intercession of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. And we are told we do not need to be ignorant about these things, for we are aware of what Christ is doing and the devices of the enemy, so that uh, we may not be swept aside. And so, um, there will be these external parades, Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Continued on, we are told, as we near the close of time, there will be a greater and still greater external parade of heathen power. Heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And this delineation has already begun to be fulfilled. Now, Look at this. We are talking about understanding the time of the children of Issachar, men who had an understanding of time and what ought to be done. So the understanding of the time helps us to know what to do. I'm not talking about setting dates and saying this year, this month, this year. Hour, Christ is coming or this probation will close or the latter rain will start falling that I'm, I'm not involved in that and uh, I don't like such a discussions where people say on this date the latter rain started on this date there will be close of probation on this year uh, I think Christ will be coming I'm not in that stuff and uh, you can spare me that time uh, I, I don't get involved in that I'm talking about being able to read the signs of the time, the information which is revealed, not the information which we want to portray it's being revealed. We are told, as chaos possesses the Middle East, with each country seemingly following a similar pattern, there will be what? Unrest, protest and riots, killing armies called out, demand for leaders' removal, replaced with someone like him or under the Jesus control, a cry will come for someone to bring peace. How do I know that? In the book of Thessalonians, we are told at the time they cry, peace, peace. So it is not something that we can make up that people will demand for peace. No. It is written at the time they say, peace, peace. They are crying for peace because the world doesn't have peace. A sudden destruction comes. And you can see that everything is on the table. And everyone is asking who is able to be able to lead us in this world. Again, in stark contrast 
to John Paul's apology, the Vatican has now sponsored a conference that portrays the Crusades as wars fought with the noble aim of gain, regaining the Holy Land for Christianity. So they are seeing that uh, the Holy Land is uh, having a lot of bloodshed and something must be done to bring about peace in that Holy Land. But there is nothing like that in the Bible. They are working on human wisdom and not on God's wisdom. One speaker at the mid-March symposium held at Pontifical University in Rome asserted that the crusaders were inflamed by an ardor for charity and love for God. So anything that they are going to do in Middle East, they are going to portray it as something that bringeth peace. But at the time they cry, peace, peace, sudden destruction shall be able to come. These men are being deceived. We are told in Timothy that wicked men will go about deceiving and being deceived. This is not something to guess about. We are not at the beginning of the time, but we are at the end of the time. It is important to understand the Vatican's view of these crusades for two reasons. One, the crusades showed the Catholic desire to control Christianity as a whole. Number two, the crusaders the crusade showed this Catholic branded form of Christianity's desire to rule the world from Jerusalem. Take the notes, ask me for the notes and verify everything on the links that we are showing. If they have not been taken down, you will find the information. Coveting Jerusalem. A Jesuit cardinal named Augustine Bear showed us how desperately the Roman Catholics wanted Jerusalem at the end of the third century. Because of its religious history and its strategic location, the holy city was considered a priceless treasure. A scheme had to be developed to make Jerusalem a Roman Catholic city. The Vatican desperately wanted Jerusalem because of its religious significance but was blocked by the Jewish. This is Alberto Rivera's in the uh, book, The Prophet. In Revelation 18.13, there is another thing that comes out that uh, maybe some have considered it, maybe some have not considered it. This Babylon, spiritual Babylon, she works in cinnamon, in the merchandise of cinnamon, odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. It means that Babylon controls the world affairs and the commerce industry in the world. And so what is it all about this controlling of businesses and the commerce in the world? We are told in 19, the, the 1973 oil crisis started in October 1973 when the members of Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries or the OPEC consisting of the Arab members of the OPEC plus Egypt, Syria and Tunisia proclaimed an oil embargo in response to the U.S. decision to resupply the Israel military. During the Yom Kippur War, think for that a moment the Day of Atonement War. So they have aligned their things to try to fall also on the great Day of Atonement. It is, it's amazing the things we read in the newspapers and they pass just our eyes without realizing what we are reading. It lasted until March 1974 with the US action seen as initiating the oil embargo and the long-term possibility of high oil prices disrupted supply and recession. A strong rift was created within NATO. This is in Wikipedia. But what, what was all this about 1973, 1979, 1990, and 2008? And the crisis of 2008, we are still facing it today. It has not gone away. What does it have to do with the end time things? Long gas lines at the pump and sky Rocketing of prices for a gallon of gas have characterized every oil crisis. With the rise of oil costs comes the inevitable rise in cost of every other community we buy. What will the rise in oil costs mean this time? How much more pain must Americans endure before our masters in Washington let oil companies sponge a few holes in the Alaskan tundra? Must we shiver? penilessly in the dark before we may extract new domestic petroleum deposits? Or shall we simply keep buying the 
111 dollar bar barrels of oil from people who want us dead approve new alaskan oil drilling already the arctic national wildlife refugees partner and parcel covers just 2000 acres a veritable raindrop in the olympic swimming pool that is alaska's 365 million acre territory and anwr's estimated 10.4 billion barrels could match or replace for 19 years the 1.5 million barrels of saudi oil that america imports daily now these people are looking for a way to monopolize the commodities and then shut out other countries from having the commodity why so that they may rely on them and control humanity that no man might buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast continued on independent truckers have staged work stoppages to showcase their plight typical big rig drivers who spend 837 a uh, uh, dollars to fill 250 gallons fuel tanks a year i go pay that is a thousand hundred and eighty nine dollars today up to 42 percent as of monday automobile drivers paid a record of um, average of 3.33 per gallon for self-serve gasoline up 53 cents in 12 months according to the federal energy information administration and this has kept rising and rising and um, you remember this man saying, if there is nothing supernatural, then they are going to create something so that they may hasten things to happen. They know that they don't have time, but only Christians think they have time. So they are creating this chaos. Dramatic photos capture the chaos in France as strikes escalate. Chaos is being created throughout the world. We think it will never come to America. Think again, it will come to America. People are getting totally fed up with corruption, greed, and injustice across this nation and world. Reminds me of German philosopher Hegel, was his name, the Hegelian dialect it called. And uh, the Hegel dialect is that you create a problem and then you create a solution. This is synthesis uh, uh, thing. And we are seeing, now, why should the middle east and america be our uh, focus so much because there are some who are deceived that uh, uh, jerusalem and israel are holy land and they have to experience peace they have to be liberated from uh, foreign forces and uh, given their land and there are those who believe that america is the land of liberty the land of the free and nothing shall befall it and so our eyes are on those two nations and so much america because we are told all eyes should be on America because he, she is the one that will give the life to the image of the beast. That he causes the people both to speak and to act like the dragon. She starts out as a lamb-like beast, but at the height of her power, she speaks like the dragon. And so all our eyes are on USA. And when these things happen in USA, they are going to spread all over the world because there are people who think that uh, whatever happens in the USA is the right thing and then it should be adopted in other countries. God forbid for that. And so, um, we are being told that we should look for these signals that um, the Roman power never changes. I'll skip over that. And uh, the papacy is trying to be on the on the on the background show that it may not be seen what it's doing but actually it is pulling up the strings of the events of this world i want to reach somewhere and uh, just uh, try to uh, wrap up this now as all these things are happening in the middle east and uh, in the other parts of the world there is chaos there is the rising of the gasoline and uh, recession and inflation is being uh, 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 on the rise I tell you also that uh, the Protestants are looking for a man who can be able to lead all religions to go back to God. Now, before I come to this issue of uh, religion as we end, um, as we look at the last slides, I mean, if you look at the inflation and the recession, actually there is no inflation and there is no recession. There is no recession, I mean, that should cause inflation. What only is being done is that the people who have commodities are hiding them. And then they create an inflation. 
the hiding of the commodities is recession and the hiking of the prices is inflation. And so they are creating a chaos where there is no chaos. There is enough food in this world to feed the people. But there are people who are playing Monopoly, the, the game of Monopoly. They are holding their cards so close. There are enough resources to make this world continue going for comfortably with people. But wicked men, in James chapter 1, we are being told that um, uh, uh, holy rich men, for you have gathered up wealth for the last days. They think that uh, they can hold up things and uh, not give unto the people and then out of it create something. But they are being told that their silver and their gold is conquered. It shall mean nothing in a short while. Because why? In Isaiah chapter 33 verse 16, God says, He will feed his children their bread and the water shall be sure. So even if these men of this world and the gigantic uh, companies try to play the game of monopoly, they are only the ones who are going to lose. Because at the end of the day, they will lose everything. But the Christians who have lost everything, they will gain everything. Think about for that as uh, we look into the game of monopoly. Now, as that is happening, there is another approach that is happening also. As the approach of the Roman armies was assigned to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy be assigned to us that the limit of God's forbearance is rich, that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full. That is in the book Great Controversy. And uh, what is this thing? The Protestants clutching the hand of the papacy. And not only the Protestants, even us who calls ourselves reformers are buying into these things of uh, Romanism. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of da by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who so readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And uh, right now people are playing church with this message of country living. But Christ is so serious with it. When you see these things, flee from the cities, find a country home, you will be safe for some time. And then he will talk, take over. But if you remain in defiance, in ignorance and disobedience, you will be overtaken like that man who said for seven years Jerusalem is going to be uh, ransacked and destroyed. And then he died in the siege itself. And we are being told, no single Christian died in the siege. So I wonder why people keep on saying that uh, people should stop being alarmist and uh, uh, looking at these things as works instead of faith. That uh, if we have faith, we can live anywhere and God will save us. True, God understands the situation of everyone. And it is true that uh, there will be people who will be caught up in the city that, and will be saved. But it's not your duty when you have a chance to move from the city, to still live in the city and say God understands and he will find some in the city and save them. You see, we, we play around with the country living message and at the end we shall find that uh, it will be double hard for us when that time comes. Then, again we are told, when Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its Christian constitution as a Protestant and Republican government and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehood and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. Did you catch that? We are looking at understanding the times. And so... We shouldn't say, oh, these people are alarmist. What are they doing? They are creating fear in some people. No, it is not fear. A prudent man foresees danger and he hides himself. The simple one ignores and is overtaken by it. That is the book of Proverbs. And so um, uh, we are told, uh, in this time, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. So if we are asking the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, then we understand the time. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. In the east, the former rain falls at the sowing time. It is necessary in order that the seed may germinate. Under the influence of the fertilizing showers, 
the tender shoot springs up. The latter rain falling near the close of the season ripens the grape grain and prepares it for the sickle. The Lord employs these operations of nature to represent the work of the Holy Spirit. So we should be asking the latter rain in the time of the latter rain. And when is the time of the latter rain? When the work is just about to finish because it is at the end of the season when the crops are about to be harvested that the latter rain comes. Now, the disciples understood the time and they were in the upper room ex uh, having an experience to receive uh, the early rain. Uh, and we are being told that uh, not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the defects to, in our characters to clean the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Now, I'll skip over some things. These are things that we know of. And uh, I'll go to something that, uh, how do we understand that uh, this is uh, the time for the latter rains? In uh, Spalding and Magan, uh, page 2, I want, I, I want you to look at this slide carefully because it also gives us some clue in the times that uh, we ought to expect the latter rain to fall on the church and to finish up the work. Thou wouldest not want him to step out if thou knewest thy situation. That desire is to disenthrone those kings, but that could not be. For kings must reign till Christ begin to reign. I saw in Europe, just as things were moving to accomplish their desires, there will, be seemingly, there will seemingly be a slackening up once or twice. Thus the hearts of the wicked will be relieved and hardened, but the work will not settle down, only seem to, for the minds of kings and rulers were intent on overthrowing each other, and the minds of the people to get their ascendance. I saw that all things are intensely looking and stretching their thoughts on the impending crisis before them. The sins of Israel must go to the judgment beforehand. So she starts speaking of this war in Europe and the sins of Israel going into the sanctuary to be forgiven. So these things come in compact, close together, in parallel, I mean. So... Every sin must be confessed at the sanctuary, then the work will move. It must be done now. The remnant in the time of trouble will cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The latter rain is coming on those that are pure. All then will receive it as formerly. So there are nations in Europe. There will be a jostling of power, a fighting of each other, and a slackening once or twice, and then this war will break forth and then when it breaks forth the sins of the people have to be forgiven so that they may not cry my god my god how why hast thou forsaken me and she says that the latter rain is coming upon the people of god now you may say there have been a lot of wars in europe but then she speaks of when these nations now starts taking stands that this one is with this and this one is with this and then it breaks up to a war that is not going to end until christ comes you can get that war in revelation chapter 17 you look at it closely when uh, the world from the war that uh, starts coming out of europe uh these ten horns uh that uh are in Daniel chapter 2 when they come again when the nations come again and they want to unite and they give the power to the beast to reign for one hour with them then uh, you may understand that this thing is coming to an end when nations start coming together so that they may give power to the dragon and to the beast know ye that uh, probation is about to close the latter rain is coming upon the people to finish up the work and then Christ comes. And so um, 
We are told political cor corruption is destroying love of justice and regard of truth. And even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public fa favor, will yield to the popular demand for law enforcing sound observance. Liberty of conscience, which has caused so great a sacrifice, will no longer be respected. Now, there is the Sunday law legislation going hand in hand with liberty of conscience being restricted. Have you seen in the recent past liberty of conscience being shut in America? Take the VAX crisis and the frontline doctors. Take the crisis on health issues and uh, the right to this and to that in US and you will find that uh, USA is start, starting to speak like a dragon. She is moving from that lamb-like beast that uh, was there since the 18th century. And now she is trying to get into the footsteps of the dragon and the beast before her. And things are about to follow that uh, really shall make the people tremble. In the soon coming conflict, we shall see exemplified the prophets were the dragon was rose with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so, as that happens, the shaking also happens. I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen and was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the counsel of the true witness to the Laodiceans. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the right the straight truth some will not bear the straight testimony um, they will uh, they will do what they will rise up against it and this is what we will cause a shaking among its god people so the wars in middle east the deception of the peace in the middle east the war in europe the parading of the heathen gods goes hand in hand with the outpouring of the latter rain and the shaking and then that will usher in jesus christ and so the the question is uh, are we ready and we are told in the last three slides christ is leading out our people to stand in perfect unity on the broad platform of eternal truth he gave himself to the world that he might purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works this refining process is designed to purge the church from the spirit of discord and contention and from all unrighteousness, that they may build up the cause of God and concentrate, concentrate their energies on the great work before them that of saving souls. Now, we are so much involved in controversies about this and about that, and we are being told that it is Satan who is creating this disunity and discordant so that the great work may not go forward. If we will become more wiser, we will know the way the enemy is working. It is a time we looked at Jesus Christ. It is a time we fed from the heavenly manner, so that we may not continue having a discord amongst us. Last thing, um, we are asked, are we to wait until the fulfillment of prophecies of the end before we say anything concerning them? Of what value will our words be then? Shall we wait until God's judgments fall upon the transgressor before we tell him how to avoid them? Where is our faith in the word of God? Must we see things foretold come to pass before we will believe that he has said? In clear distinct rays, light has come to us, showing us that the great day of the Lord is near at hand, even at the doors. Let us read and understand before it is too late. But what is the problem? The line of distinction between professed Christians and the ungodly is now hardly distinguishable. Church members love what the world loves and are ready to join with them, and Satan determines to unite them in one body and thus strengthen his cause by sweeping all into the ranks of spiritualism. Papists who boast of miracles as a certain sign of the true church will be readily deceived by the wonder-working power, and Protestants, having cast away the shield of truth, will also be deluded. Papists, Protestants, and worldlings will alike accept the form of godliness without the power, and they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering in of long-expected millennia. 
And so, lastly, what? There are many in the church who at heart belong to the world, but God calls upon those who claim to believe the advanced truth to rise above the present attitude of the popular churches of today. Where is the self-denial? Where is the cross-bearing that Christ has said should characterize his followers? The reason we have had so little influence upon unbelieving relatives and associates is that we have manifested little difference, decided difference in our practices from those of the world. Parents need to awake, and I said everyone, and purify their souls by practicing the truth in their home life. When we reach the standard that the Lord will have us reach, worldlings will regard Seventh day Adventists as odd, singular, straight lesson extremists. We are made a spectacle unto the world, unto angels and unto men then this earth will not have a place for us and christ shall be able to come and take us so that uh, where he is also we may be my question to you and to myself do we understand times are we like the children of Issachar who understood the time and what we ought to do if we don't understand the time, then James 1, 5 says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives without upbraiding. He gives liberally. And I know those whom God, who are seeking God, he will never cast them out. And so let us seek God with all our heart. And when we seek him, he shall be found of us. We shall find him. We are told, seek God while he may be found. And so may the Lord bless us. May we contemplate upon these things and may the Lord help us to set the path straight and those things which are still wanting that they may be straightened in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us close with a word of prayer. God in heaven, information is good, but information that is not acted upon is a distraction to those who are holding it. If the gospel can save, it can only ruin and Father, we want the gospel to work as a means of our salvation, not as a condemnation. And so thank you, Lord. Open our eyes, open our ears, that we may see the great things in thy word. And so give us this agape love to love you more than we love the things of this world. In Jesus' name, amen.